Welcome to the St. John the Evangelist Virtual Town Hall Meeting. Thank you for taking the time to listen and view this presentation. At the end of this presentation, you will be asked to submit your feedback using online links. If you are receiving this presentation as a hard copy, the feedback form will be enclosed for you to complete and return to the parish office. To begin this presentation, I invite you to pray with me the prayer for our building project. Let us pray. O Lord, we humbly ask you to bless our building project as we seek to work for the honor and glory of you alone. Guide us and direct us always in this effort that we may be perfected as instruments of your will. We pray that our efforts will be fitting of the sacred mysteries that will be celebrated daily upon the altar, where souls will come to worship and adore you in spirit and in truth. We pray that you will be pleased to dwell in this house of prayer and to fill it with your divine presence. O King of kings and Lord of lords, we pray that this church will be a visible sign to a fallen world of your presence among us, a place where souls will come to behold the Lamb of God. May countless souls find a haven from the turmoil of the world. May hungry souls come to be fed the bread of life. May weary and burdened souls come to find rest. May contrite and penitent souls come to receive your great mercy. Relying solely on your loving providence, we seek only to produce a church according to your will, and we beg of you the grace and continual assistance so that it may be accomplished. May our patron, St. John the Evangelist, intercede for us, strengthen us, and protect us in this effort. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Part of our first town hall meeting in May of 2019 included submitting nominations of parishioners to serve on our building committee. Over 60 names were submitted. I called each one of them to ask if they accepted the nomination for further consideration. Approximately 35 individuals accepted their nomination for further consideration. Don Klossmeyer was the most nominated person from the parish and was chosen to be the chair of our committee. From the 35 persons nominated and willing to serve, Don and I chose three women and three men to serve on the committee. In choosing members to serve on the building committee, effort was made to have representatives from various demographics of the parish. In addition to men and women, it was important to identify those from differing generations and those in various stages of raising their families. It was also important to identify those with skill sets that would help during the master planning phase, the schematic design phase, the capital campaign phase, and the building phase. It was important to formulate a committee that was representative of our entire parish. A personal trait I looked for in naming parishioners to the building committee was the ability to advocate for a position, to discuss the various opinions of others openly and with respect, and with flexibility that would allow them to achieve consensus with others over time. The committee was chosen as follows. Jamie Buck is married to David, and they have two grown daughters. Jamie works as a certified paralegal. Juliana Handy is married to Caleb, and they have four small children. Juliana works as a registered nurse for Via Christi. Don Klossmeyer is married to Marilyn, and they have raised nine boys and two girls. Don is a local home builder. Jason Martin is married to Jennifer, and they have four young adults and teen children. Jason owns a local excavating business. Angela Solomon is the mother of three daughters, two in college and one in high school. Angela is a stay-at-home mother. 
Father Joe is the pastor of St. John's and provides psychological services for the Diocesan College House of Formation. Wayne Youngers is married to Terry, and they have seven grown children. Wayne works in his family's business and farms. Brian Zimmerman is married to Rose, and they have five small children. Brian works for Berry Material Handling. One of the first responsibilities of our building committee was to determine the best approach for our parish, to work with a builder using the design-build approach or to use the more traditional approach of working with an architect in developing a design to put out for bid. The diocese prefers parishes to use the more traditional approach of designing prior to putting the project out for bid to construction companies. This slide gives you a pictorial flowchart of the two options. The committee ultimately chose to use the traditional project delivery. This this process often requires a longer time frame, but allows for greater hands-on involvement in the schematic design phase. After interviewing four architects with various levels of experience in both design build and traditional project delivery, the building committee agreed they were more comfortable with the traditional approach. Randy Crook from the architectural firm Sheldon Architecture Incorporated was chosen as the architect. Randy has extensive experience with church projects in the diocese. He has many years of experience as an architect, and he and his wife have raised five children at Blessed Sacrament Parish in Wichita. I hope to help prisoners understand the decision-making process used during this building project. We are using a consensus building approach. This approach allows the committee to do much of the work while incorporating input from the community during the process. There are multiple points in the process when a formal presentation is provided, such as this one. At those points, prisoners are also invited to share their input, feedback, and suggestions. This process prevents the two extremes of decision-making. It avoids an autocracy where decisions are made by one person or a small number of persons. It also avoids a pure democracy where every person votes on every decision along the way, resulting in no progress. Upon completion of the master plan and the schematic design phase, parishioners will endorse or not endorse the project with their pledge toward meeting the financial obligation of the project. The building committee wanted to be sure to receive feedback from various perspectives. The first perspective is one's personal one and their observations. Beyond our own experience, the committee wanted to take into consideration the changing demographics of the parish, the projected growth of the parish, and the testimonial witness of parishioners following the first town hall meeting in May of 2019. Multiple needs and wishes were noted by several parishioners. These included more spacing between pews, the repair of pews, seating capacity, better handicapped accessibility, the need for additional restrooms, better lighting, and general repairs of the flooring and ceiling. Other identified issues included a wider altar, updated sanctuary furniture, and improved altar of repose or high altar, expanded sacristy for ministers, and improved beautification of the building by adding stained glass windows and updating statue niches. Other items expressed by parishioners were the desire for an adoration chapel, additional classrooms, and an expanded parish center to accommodate larger wedding receptions, funeral dinners, and parish dinners, and an outdoor devotional or prayer space. From the beginning, the building committee was tasked with determining one of three directions we could move toward making our church more inviting and welcoming, accommodating of the needs of today and the future, and meeting the list of established needs from parishioners. Three options were considered for several months. Option A was to renovate the current structure, 
adding elements of beauty and making adjustments to our pews to make it more welcoming. Option B was to renovate the current structure with an addition to the building that would be able to accommodate some of the established needs such as restrooms, additional seating, improved confessionals, etc. And option C was to build a new church that would accommodate all of the needs identified. The committee observed that putting money into option A would result in returning to a situation where the same issues would be left unmet. It was determined that this would not be the best fit for our community for future generations. Option A was eliminated from consideration in September of 2019. Option B was a preferred option by many of the committee members. We challenged our architect to show us drawings that would allow us to continue using the current structure with an expansion that would accommodate the identified needs. In order to meet all the basic needs desired, the church would need to be expanded in three directions. This kind of expansion would have left sight lines obstructed by pillars and would have meant being without a church building for a year to a year and a half while under construction. Option B also was not of great advantage financially. The price difference between renovating and expanding our church building and a new build was not significant enough to earn the vote of our committee, resulting in a decision to eliminate option B in November of 2019. Option three, building a new building, appeared to be the wisest use of substantial money and placed us in the best position to serve the upcoming generations. Getting to this point in the process took a significant amount of discussion, looking at architectural drawings and asking multiple questions. Many of the building committee were challenged to question our first impressions and to open ourselves to different possibilities. Jamie Buck was one who challenged herself to consider possibilities beyond what she had first conceptualized. I accepted the call to serve on the building committee with the goal to keep an open heart and an open mind to all ideas presented. My personal view at the beginning of the process was to expand and renovate the existing church building. The committee spent many hours evaluating the needs and desires of the parish. Months into the process and equipped with the information, it became clear the best and most cost-effective option for the future of our parish is to build a new church. Jamie Buck, Building Committee Member. Bishop Kimmy was contacted prior to our first town hall meeting for his initial input. He expressed in his letter, quote, My thought is that a new church, though challenging for the current parishioners, could also be very exciting for present and succeeding generations, end quote. Bishop Kimmy also expressed his commitment to keeping St. John's as its own parish and having its own residential pastor in the years ahead. I found his words to be encouraging toward the stability and viability of our parish community. This past week, Bishop Kimmy responded to my request for his thoughts as we prepared for our second town hall meeting. He wrote, In my visits to your parish, I have sensed a dynamic parish that is looking to the future with hope and energy. I think there are younger families with children and truly committed parishioners. It seems as though the future looks very bright for St. John in Clonmel. Bishop Kimmy offered us his philosophical understanding of the purposes of the church for our reflection. He reminds us that liturgical space is not only functional, but also to enhance the experience of our worship by being a worthy environment. Bishop wrote, the church itself must be the center of parish life and one that not just gathers and holds the people adequately, but also serves as a visible reminder of God's Eucharistic presence in that area. The church needs space for liturgical prayer, private prayer and adoration, confession, as well as the other sacraments to be celebrated worthily and fruitfully. In light of the bishop's pastoral plan, with the church as the center of our parish lives, 
a church building that meets our established needs is encouraged by Bishop Kemi. The bishop wrote, I am of the mind that the diocesan pastoral vision and plan would be better served by a larger church which would assist in reclaiming Sunday as the day of the Lord. So I very much support this project and look forward to the day when it might become a reality. Having the bishop's support and encouragement is helpful when thinking about three generations ahead. That's 90 years. We are not considering only ourselves, but your children, grandchildren, and others who move into the area. While Bishop Kimmy is supportive, he may not always be the Bishop of Wichita. Succeeding bishops may consider Clonmel for closure if we are not prepared to serve our community for the next hundred years. Our church building has served us well for nearly 80 years. It is time to provide for the next 80 to 100 years. Once the building committee has determined it was best to move toward building a new church building, we had to decide where to place this new structure. Several factors played a role in making that determination. These factors, including keeping it reasonably close to the parish center, keeping it close to the cemetery, preventing issues with kids running across parking areas to get to other buildings, minimizing noise and danger from K42 Highway, and beautifying the campus by creating a campus-like layout. Several locations were not considered optimal. The area between the parish center and the current church was considered, but was eliminated because of potential future expansion of the parish center to accommodate additional classrooms and a larger hall. The area west of Clonmel Hall was considered, but was eliminated due to the safety issues of crossing between buildings and its proximity to 71st Street. As stated earlier in this presentation, it was agreed upon that maintaining use of the current church was necessary while a new church was being built. Having no church for one to two years would leave many feeling They had no place to worship. Several other locations were considered by the committee but were determined to not be viable due to various reasons, including the distance to other buildings, parking concerns, or the use of property owned by the Clonmel Community Club. These spaces included the north side of the cemetery, although it is already plotted with burial spaces, and with the northeast corner of our property. In this slide, the area in red is owned by the Clonmel Community Club. As the building committee decided where to place the new church, it became obvious that this was also the time to address the combination of our offices in the personal residence of the pastor. The diocese has asked parishes to address this issue when undertaking major projects so as to best comply with Virtus guidelines. We are currently two offices short. Father uses his dining room table as his office and our accounting and finance person use the rectory basement. Keeping the offices close to the new church also allows us to have multi-purpose spaces. The conference room can serve as a bride's room. The offices can also provide storage for church items. The offices would easily serve as additional confessional spaces during a penance service or as a vesting area for the bishop The master plan being provided to you today also includes building a new rectory. This was never the intention of our building committee. However, it seemed to make the most sense as the master plan came together. It was easier to place the rectory south of its current location than to move the church south. Building a new new rectory will separate out the offices from the pastor's living quarters, 
providing needed privacy for your pastors and a more professional atmosphere for the parish office. The building committee believes that the master plans being presented today best meet the established needs of our parish and positions us for long-term viability for years to come in the Diocese of Wichita. We also believe that this master plan accommodates the needs of future generations at St. John's Clonmel. The process of coming to this master plan did not come simply or without difficulty. We went through multiple configurations and discussed numerous issues to determine what was a priority in the process. Ultimately, we determined that keeping our current structure while building new was essential, that safety and proximity were essential. Finally, that considering future growth and family needs over the next 90 years was also essential. This is Wayne Youngers, member of the St. John's Building Committee. As the Building Committee considered the future of St. John's and the building project, I strive to be open to all the possibilities. My first idea is favored a remodel of the existing building with expansion to the size of the current church. After reviewing a number of options with the committee and architect, and to what degree these options would meet the parish needs for the next hundred years, it became obvious we should also look at building a new church and develop the master plan. I believe the committee worked with an open mind to consider all options. We came together with a master plan that we were all in consensus with and that we considered would be the right direction for the parish to move forward. This plan we are revealing checked off most all of the parish needs that were put forth in the town hall meetings. I do realize that this plan may be a bit of a challenge to the mind at first look. My hope is that the parish community will consider it from the hundred year view of our parish family and that you will agree that this master plan with a new church will lay the foundation for St. John's Clonmel to thrive for the next hundred years plus. We are blessed as a parish. Let's prepare for and embrace the future. It is the intention of the building committee to maintain a sense of continuity between our current worship space and the new. We intend to use many of the liturgical and artistic pieces from our current church in the new building. This will include our candlesticks, our tabernacle, our statues, and our stations of the cross. We want to bring our heritage with us into the new structure, not leave it behind. We are seeking your input. The following slides present you with two master plans. The first one within our currently owned property. The second option would require the acquisition of property to the west of our current property. The building committee decided to seek your input prior to making a decision about either option. The master plans revealed to you today show only a template of buildings of an approximate size that they will be constructed. The next phase of the building committee is the schematic design phase. That phase will include the layout of the church building, materials used, and architectural drawings of the proposed new church and offices. These will be presented in our next town hall prior to a building campaign. Today we are presenting these two master plans. Master plan A utilizes land we already own and keeps our buildings in closer proximity. Master Plan B requires the acquisition of land to the west of our property so that the campus can be stretched out providing more green space and additional parking closer to the church. Master Plan A. The red line on this map represents the approximate boundary of our current property. Master Plan B. Likewise, the red line represents the approximate boundary of our current property. To the west or left of that line is land we would need to acquire. This slide shows our existing buildings in relation to where new buildings would be constructed. The current church is outlined in green 
the parish rectory or priest's residence is outlined in orange, and the parish center is outlined in purple. Please note that both master plans show an addition to the parish center. This project is not part of the current project, but would be expected with growth and welcoming accommodations to the parish church. This addition is put in the master plan because it is helpful in determining where a new church should be built. A future addition to the parish center in master plan A and a future addition to the parish center in Master Plan B. The new church location determined the location of other buildings. Placing the church in the corner of our property makes it the anchor of our campus, whether entering from K42 or from 71st Street. Everything else flows out from the centralized church building. The location of the new church in Master Plan A. Something notable about this plan is that it keeps our buildings in closer proximity to one another. The location of the new church in Master Plan B. This plan allows for additional parking closer to the church building and for green space between the parish center and the new parish offices. The parish offices are close to the church and remain in proximity to the parish center. This allows the offices to be used for multiple purposes, such as a bride's room, extra confessional space, and vesting area when multiple priests are present. The new parish offices in Master Plan A. The new parish offices in Master Plan B. Working to accommodate the needs of elderly, those with physical limitations, and those wishing to avoid the harsh Kansas weather, we added a covered drop-off area to the southwest corner of the new church. That covered drop-off in Master Plan A, and the covered drop-off in Master Plan B. The committee desired to keep the rectory on the parish campus and an integral part of the campus layout. It should be noted that the cost of building a new rectory has already been provided for by parishioners and will not be considered in the costs of our capital campaign. The rectory or priest residence in Master Plan A and the rectory or priest residence in Master Plan B. When I was first approached about serving on the building committee, I was not interested in serving. After prayerful consideration, I decided to accept the position and hoped I would have something useful to contribute. I was honored to be chosen as the chairman, but certainly didn't seek it. It has been a great learning experience in part, being part of the committee that is focused on what is best for the future of St. John the Evangelist Parish. The evolution of ideas from the first meeting to the last meeting is truly amazing. I believe Father Tetro was moved by the Holy Spirit to start this process, and I believe the Holy Spirit is driving the committee's progress. Everyone has been respectful of other opinions, even if they didn't agree with them. We have input from all committee members, and we always seem to come to a consensus of agreement. It is my hope that the parish family prays for us to have an open mind, considering all views of the future for this parish. I was taught to leave things better than you found them, and that is my goal for the future members of our parish family. Thank you, Don Klossmeyer. We do want your feedback. It is essential to the consensus building process to have the feedback of parishioners at this time. Please click on the attached link under this presentation or see the attached feedback forms for your comments, questions, feedback, and ideas. The committee will take 
all of your feedback into consideration. We have now reached the next step for the building committee. The building committee has begun work on the schematic design phase where they are addressing the layout of the church, structural elements, and artistic design. This is expected to take several months and another town hall meeting will be presented at the conclusion of that phase. After the schematic design phase and a third town hall meeting, we will begin our capital campaign. The capital campaign will require a completed schematic fit plan as well as a stabilized economy. Thank you for taking the time to listen and review this presentation. It is a lot to take in at first. I encourage you to take your time looking it over, praying about what God is asking of you, and being open to ideas that may take you beyond what you came prepared to accept. I am aware that this project is large for a parish of our size. My prayer is that God will reveal his will for us through the, this process, including challenging each of us personally as well as communally. I ask you con to continue praying for this project, that God's will be carried out. I look forward to hearing your feedback in the coming weeks. May the Lord bless you and your families.